Hey y'all, welcome back to Spirit of the Outdoors. I mentioned in my last video that I was thinking about getting me some cheater tomato plants. Now what I meant by that was to go buy some already up, be, you know, cheat a little bit and get me a plant. This is a three pack uh, and it's a big beef. They didn't have a lot to choose from where I was at. I was just at a local feed store and you can see I done put two. I, I'm, I like to experiment, y'all. I like to see what'll work, what won't. So I took one and put it out in my raised bed where I'm gonna grow all of my main tomatoes uh, just because they straw there and I just stuck one in there. The other one I put in this little pot that I have that I always put a tomato in every year so that I can watch it grow, I can water it, I can experiment with different fertilizers, chicken fertilizer or commercial or whatever I wanna do. This one, I wanna show you what I'm gonna do with it. Um, I don't know how many of you are familiar with this. Y'all, I watch a lot of YouTube videos as far as TV. I don't really get into TV. I just, I, I watched all the old good shows and they really don't make nothing fit to watch anymore. Uh, so I watch a lot of YouTube videos and how I missed this, I have no idea. Uh, but this is a method of, of watering your plants in a container uh, we can water up in there so that you don't have to forget about water. I and mean, y'all, that's one of my biggest problems here with these containers. Uh, containers and raised beds will flat out grow what you put in the ground 10 to 1 on just basic growing. Now, if you really put a lot of effort and you really condition your soil and you really do a lot of work, you can grow them in the ground just as well as you can a container. But for the average person that's just going to stick them there and walk off and water them along, a container or a raised bed will grow better because that soil can dry out and you're not depending on the rain. You're going to come by and try to water it along. And, and something about the, the, the being raised up a little bit and it can drain that water away helps them grow a lot better well y'all my biggest problem is i'll get busy and forget to water it till it's wilted and then it, it's going through this cycle of being stressed and so anyway y'all know what i'm talking about well, i want to show you what i'm going to put together these youtube videos on it most of you probably have already seen this but i wanted to do the video because i'm going to build one because i want to experiment with it and I figure there's a lot of you that probably have missed this too, because for me to miss something on YouTube is, is you know, I, I don't know how I, how I missed this. But uh, stick with me, and we're going to get this tomato potted up in a, in a container and show you what I'm talking about. Okay, y'all. I know you can't see my face, but you ain't missing much. Oh. <laughs> this is one of those mineral tubs i've had several of them i pick them up here there when somebody's throwing something away i because i've got water catching in them i plant stuff in them now obviously you've got to put a drain hole in this well this is the beauty of using these if you use a flower pot it's already got holes down low it's not going to work for you so what you've got to do is you've got to make one hole on the side of this thing to drain water out so that it don't overfill and fill up to the top and drown your plants if it because we get a lot of rain it's one of the problems we've had in here in the last several years is throughout up until June, we get like two inches of rain every week. We even got, a, we had a storm day before yesterday. We've got a storm coming back in Tuesday. So we, we getting a lot of rain. That's one of the reasons I want to go to the no-till. Last year, I lost part of my garden because I couldn't get the tractor in it to ply it. I couldn't get a tiller in it to till. And, and I couldn't see after it. So I want to go to something else to where right now it's been raining like crazy. And I got down in my garden and done all kinds of stuff right after it rained. So it, it it's just better so what i'm doing with this now you have to drill these holes pretty close to the same height what you want to do is you want to come in here and i don't know what size this drill bit even is it's an 11 16 this is a fairly large drill bit it's compared to my finger it's probably a little bigger than my finger oh uh, let's do a milk jug because that's going to be my smallest jug you want to come into the side of this thing Try not to push too hard to where I make a hole in my finger. Oh. Alright, hold about an inch up. Hold up here before you get to the top. Leaves a little bit of an air gap. Do that relatively the same height to all your jugs. I'm not going to poke myself. Alright. So, 
Leave the tops on your jug. Now we're gonna do this to all of them. Now we're gonna come in right above, I think, that line. Y'all know Brody drank up a lot of milk, y'all. Okay, I got all of them. Yes. Okay, now that's where that's sitting level and you got all that packed down. You want them sitting on the bottom. Empty jugs, just stick them in there. You want to drill just a little above that hole so that water can drain out of here once it fills up that jug. So I know that's about, I want to come up about an inch above that. Somewhere right in there. One hole, okay? One one wicking hole, or I mean one drainage hole to drain the whole thing. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go fill this with dirt. What happens is you fill this up to wherever with dirt. Right there, that's where I'm gonna fill it to. You can round it off at the top, however you wanna do yours. The dirt goes down in between these. But when you fill this with water, and I'm gonna put a pipe in there, I've gotta locate my pipe. Oh, I, I know I've got, I got scraps to it, I got pipe. But you stick a piece of pipe down there, cut it at an angle so that it don't cap off at the bottom. And uh, you pour your water into there and it goes down here and fills up the bottom. Well, it'll fill these jugs up, okay? That, 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 these jugs will hold water. Well, as it drains out, It'll fill into here. Now, once it fills up there, it'll start running out here. Oh. That, that'll that keep that soil in the bottom moist. It'll wick that up to your plant. Your plants are setting up here. And you can come by and check your pipe to see how much water. If it starts getting dry in that pipe, you can just fill it up with water. And while you're going on vacation to the beach or wherever you want to go, your plants is watering their cells while you're gone. Let's fill it up with dirt and get it planted. All right, y'all. I found me a piece of pipe. I just put an elbow on it so that, and I turned that elbow toward one of the holes in my milk jugs. Uh, I did go, I had to go back y'all and watch how Mr. Leon did this. Now I ain't taking credit for this design by no means. I found this on YouTube and I'm just kind of passing knowledge on because several people has already done different things, but I think Mr. Leon was one of the first ones that done it and came up with the idea. So I, I'm gonna make sure he gets the credit y'all. I didn't come up with this design, but I drilled this next hole a little bit lower than where I originally drilled it because I think that hole has to be below the hole in the, the top hole in the milk jug so that the water can drain out of them. So, uh, just so we understand, milk jugs in here, two holes in them. One hole inch from the bottom, one hole a little bit down from the top. Make all your holes and all your jugs relatively the same place because all it allows is for water to come in the bottom of the jug and fill up to a certain area and start running back out of the jug. The soil will go down in between these jugs and create a wicking and it'll wick out. You fill your water through this pipe right here. Now you can put a rod with a cork in it and it'll come up and down and you can put marks on it to tell how much water you got in and out of it so that set it in there and mark it when it's empty and then as you fill it up, when it quits filling up and starts running out the side over here, you'll know it's full and you can put your mark there however you want to do it. Oh, uh, but now this is my cow manure compost that I've been, uh, now you don't want to pack this just tight.
but you do want it down in there to where it'll wick. So I am going to joshle this around. Y'all know what joshle means. And I don't want it to get in there and fill up my jugs. I think some of you'll appreciate this. Oh, now I like to I like to grow my tomatoes in a graze bed. That's my preferred way. Uh, and really, I think that everything does better in a raised bed. I just I think that I, it's been my experience. However, I do like a traditional garden. There's just some things you can't grow in a raised bed. You can't grow a crop of peas or corn in a raised bed. Now, yes, you can grow enough to snack on and eat a year or two here, there, and yonder. But if you're trying to crop and put up in the freezer and feed your whole family and your neighbor too, a raised bed ain't the answer. So everything has its place. But I, I do like to have a container to put some tomatoes in and uh, there's no telling what all I'll wind up with in here because more than likely, if this works as well as I think it's going to, I think it'll grow about anything I want to put in it. Just because I say that a raised bed will grow everything better. You can grow anything in a raised bed. Just some things don't make as much sense in it. Y'all, how are we going to get that back up in that boogie? My lord. We got to haul it back up yonder. Oh! Hemorrhoids, here we come. I know I didn't pick that up right. I used my back a little bit. Shouldn't have done that. I'm all right, though. It didn't, know. I didn't pull nothing. I'm trying to keep this piled up out of my, where I mow here. Y'all, I got a good, and I just go along when I can. It ain't muddy and rainy. And keep adding to this. This is compost out from around where a farmer down here has got some cows where he's feeding hay. Been feeding there several years, and I can go scoop it up. It's already composted, uh, and it's, well fertilized so that's gonna make good dirt i've got some few medicinal plants growing right in here along the front of this building so i've got to be careful where i step but i'm gonna get this potted up now i'm gonna put this one dead center uh, and i'm gonna plant it fairly deep if they real leggy you can stand them up but i bought these because these plants looked really healthy. It was not the particular variety that I prefer. Uh, in fact, I have never grown a big beef tomato. May love them, who knows? I'm not scared to try something new. I favor Better Boy tomatoes. The best growing tomato that I have brought here in food with is the Hillbilly Potato Leaf. It's a huge yellow tomato. Absolutely does well. It's Hillbilly Potato Leaf has a smooth leaf. The Cherokee Purples do well here. They're the ugliest tomatoes that they are. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I like the color, but the shape, they just come out all wumpy. I don't know, they they ain't never uh, just a perfect round tomato. Every now and then I get some that are. But. So what I'm gonna do now is go get my, I'm gonna leave this tag right here beside this. I'm going to show you the one behind me, but we're going to get a water can and we're going to start filling this up. Now, it's going to take several gallons of water to fill this. I may put a funnel in. Now, this five-gallon bucket of water is not quite full. And y'all know you can use a milk jug for just about anything. They even make a good canteen. That's probably going to... I knew that was going to happen. Hiding the high... I knowed it. I knowed it. If I had a way of holding that right there, hang on, hang on, I'm a thinker. All right, I'm gonna take this piece of rod, I'm gonna run it right through that handle down in that dirt, and let's see what happens. Let's go right.
Well, that water's going somewhere, boys. my wheat poles there. It's starting to drip out of that. Let me spin a Rudy this. Will you? It just barely trick it out. Let's see if it'll hold some more without running out. Y'all, I'm dipping this water up out of a rain catching barrel over there. I've got about four, two of this size and two 55 gallon drums that I catch rain water in. I prefer to water my plants without chlorinated water. That's just me. I use chlorinated water sometimes when I got to because I hook a water hose to my garden, turn it on, and walk off for about 30 minutes in the summer. So I use it, but I don't like to. Well, well. My little, my little duplicum didn't work then, did it? Y'all know what a duplicum is? That's kind of like a wiggling pin that goes in the wobbling hole. The thingamajig, you know, the whatchamacallit. Yeah, it's a duplicate. Well, we running out big time over there now. I believe we done got all we're gonna get. Since it's running out, it's up to about right there in this pipe. So it's going to drain down, but hey, we know how much it's going to hold now. I got me another thing to plant my own plants in. I save them too. I save everything. I like to recycle. But now, if you want to be on HGTV with it, you don't call it recycle. You call it upcycle. All right. Anyway, moving plant around. I'm going to turn around and show you. How I'm going to do this in the future because I ain't got my stuff together to do it right at the moment. But being right now, the nights are getting down mid-30s. Well, upper 30s. I think it was 37, 36 last night for the low. That's not going to kill your tomato plants. But it will cool this soil down in a way that it don't grow as fast. Follow what I'm telling you here, Ham. Let me turn you around and show you what I did. Right under here, and I'll uncover it so we can look at it, check water and whatnot. There's a tomato and a couple of onions that I planted. Okay. And see, I've got this. This is a cage I made out of some hog wire. I planted my tomato right off down here in the center of it. Uh, there's a couple of onions are growing over here that is wet uh, so that's the way I do that I have sowed some seed in here I think there's some marigold seeds in there I got marigold plant started I definitely put a marigold plant in there that helps fight the aphids off last year I had a hillbilly potato leaf and a uh, Cherokee purple grow inside the side up here that that hillbilly potato leaf will grow all the way up to the top of that edge of that shed which is eight foot seven eight foot something like that and hang down and come all the way back to the ground nearly uh Cherokee purple don't quite get that tall or it happened for me and that's in the same bucket side to side but man it loaded up with aphids like late in the year uh I wound up having to spray them. So this year I'm going to try the marigolds and all that. They say that'll help with the aphids. I'm going to try to do some stuff like that. But this may be getting, it ain't getting too warm in there. But see, this soil is very warm right here. That's good for that tomato. So I may need to water. I don't know. You have to be careful, y'all. I'm bad to overwater stuff. Just being, we doing some plant updates. I did pot up these squash and all. Oh. And y'all, these back here, these striper squash, the one Mr. Honeycutt sent me. And they, y'all, they doing good. They, them things growing fast. Oh. Then I got yellow zucchinis. I have never grown yellow zucchinis. My green zucchinis are around yonder, but y'all, I potted all this stuff up. I watered it good, but I may have to, I don't know, I'm having to keep an eye on it. I wanted to build me a greenhouse, but I ain't going to get to that this year. I'm thinking about taking and covering this over 
with plastic, but I don't have a good way to do it. So I may, I may just prop me some boards up against the side of that and put some plastic down one side. I can still get under there, but it'll cover it. But more than likely, I'll take these back in there and put them under the lean-to tonight. Uh, these little tomatoes seem to be doing a little better out here in the sun. I don't know. While I'm out here pilfering around, I call it, I want to show y'all what I made. Check that out. Now, I made this out of on saw blades that you've seen me make a lot of knives out of. I did not harden this like I do some of my knives, in other words, to put a razor's edge and all that on there. Should I have? Who knows? If I just ground it down, cut it out with a uh, cut-off wheel on the grinder, ground it down, sharpened it, we took a piece of rebar and forged this, and then we quenched it, put it in the forge, heated it up, dipped it in water, or no, we dipped it in oil. So that, give that to where it wouldn't straighten out when you really, you know, really hardened that pretty good. Uh, and then I took a, uh, I think that's a piece of ash that I had. Look at that nice crook on the handle. So when you get in the garden, and you've got a little little place to grab right there. And I, I, I strategically picked that out. But uh, it hadn't quite dried, so I've had it propped up in there. But, y'all, I'm a mite proud of that. The reason I wanted this, I favor my old antique hose. I like homemade stuff. Uh, I like to make things. Uh, and I like to use something I've made. I usually get more partial to it than something that I've store bought. But I wanted this to make my furs with because I'm going to do a lot of hand planting this year and not using uh, the push planter and whatnot. So I wanted to be able to have something that had more of a point that I could dig a small fur with. And then y'all, I, I briefly showed this, but I, I use it. I've done planting some okra and different things and I like this little stick. It's just a pointed stick with a T-handle. The T-handle is not necessary. Uh, you could use it, and I had one somewhere I'm working on that's going to have a rounded handle. It's just going to be the stick, uh, just because I like making things and I'm still fiddling around. Uh, but I didn't actually put a sharp tip point on it. I need to make it a little more flat where you can put a seed and push that seed down. But you got to be careful. This one is designed actually to put plants in the ground out of these six-pack sails. Uh, because you see that sail and then this will, will make a hole and once you poke it in there You can kind of wobble it just a little bit make it bigger Anyway, I just wanted to show y'all my hoe I got my own hoe now Well y'all I just wanted to show you how to do this in case by chance y'all hadn't seen it somewhere else it Might be something you want to try uh, Thank y'all for watching my videos. Thank you for watching spirit of the outdoors. We'll see y'all next time. Y'all have a good one